Hello everyone. So one of the most powerful widgets that Mendix has to offer is the Data Grid 2. And we actually discovered some of the hacks to make it even more powerful. In this video, we'll be looking at two such tricks that gives it an extra boost. And also it is something that everyone needs and most of them are looking for it, but Mendix doesn't provide out of the box. So the two tricks are the first one to show and hide the columns based on what columns are being sorted on. And the second is how to reset all the filters just by clicking a single button. So um, yeah, I'll be showing you how it works in the application and um, also walking through all the, uh, how it's done in the Mendix app. So um, say I have a city that's added over here, that's Edmonton, and I can also add a new city, but in this example, you're going to focus on the data grids too only. So um, the example I've taken here is a city and its temperature for the past 100 days and how that is showing up in a data grid two format. And also, so those um, four columns that we have over here are the date, description, temperature, and the change in temperature. So the change column shows what was the change um, or how many degrees was the change compared to the previous day. So for example, if today is 70 degrees 0.37 and yesterday was 84.12, then the difference between the two is 13.75 degrees. So, and I've added some extra logic in the, in the pages to uh, show the ones that are negative as red and the ones that are positive as green. So the, let's look at the first trick over here, right? So um, we want to hide the change column if the data in the table is not sorted by the change itself or if the dates are not in descending order because if the dates are in some other order or the sort order is on temperature or description, then what happens is the change really doesn't show a purpose or doesn't have a purpose because now the data is sorted by a different order and not the dates being in descending order so we want to hide that change uh in that situation so that the the end users are not um, misguided by this information so say if user sorts a table by description then the change order change column is gone and now you see only three columns um same way if you do the description descending order, it is still hidden. But if you <clears throat> if you click on the description one more time and all the dates are, uh, all the sorting order is gone, then you'll see that the change column is back because now your table is not sorted by, by any of the, by any of the columns, right? So, and again, if you sort the table by date in a descending order, then you see it being sorted. Uh, you see the change also being uh, into the picture over here. So that's the first trick. And <clears throat> the second trick that we'll be talking about is, is how to reset all the filters. So say you want to look at the, at the colder days, right? Um, and also say the temperature that has been more than 50 degrees Celsius, but we also want to be looking at it only in the last 15 days. And now apply sorting based on temperature. So you see that there are three filters and one sorting in place. Now, if you don't have a single reset button, then the user would have to go and empty all these three fields and uh, remove the sorting order as well. So that's four extra clicks, but uh, we have a reset button functionality added or uh, custom reset button functionality created for this use case particular. So uh, hit the reset button and all the filters are gone and the table is back to 100 records. So uh, you can also create more records by creating this generated weather data and we'll create 100 more records uh, randomly. But that's a topic for another discussion. So we'll focus on data grids too in this one. So we have two main pages over here. One is the home web um, where we show the show the first list of cities and 
what the current day's temperature is and what's the change on it from previous day. So, and also show it as red or green based on positive or negative. And then an action to delete. But once you click on this one, you go to the next page that is the city view. So city view has the whole data grid. It has three filters um, and the all the four columns and the reset button, right? So, and this is <clears throat> our domain model. So our domain model has multiple things. First, it is that uh, it is a city and weather has one to many relationships. So weather is the object where you store date, description, temperature, and change, all the four columns that we are looking at. And the city is just name of city and zip code. And also the the data grid two helper is a non-person entity because we don't want to store any of that information once a user is not logged in. So, um, or the once a user logs out. So in that case, we are storing it as a one-to-many relationship because it, the relation is between a persistent entity and a non-persistent entity. Um, if both were persistent or both were non-persistent, we could make it as a one-to-one -one relationship. But in this case, what we do is as the, the page load city is passed in as a parameter, and then we go and fetch data grid to helper, um, we generally uh, just end up creating one if the one is, if there's nothing available that is um, already was created in the previous, uh, in the same session and was connected to the city. So what we do is we get a list of helpers by association with the city. Um, once we have it, we sort it by the change date in descending order, which means the latest one. And if we have an exist one, we get it by the head. And, and then we pass that uh, by changing the sorting order to default and setting all the filters to empty to the data grid <clears throat> or to the page. And if not, we create a new one. So once we have this, uh, what you need it is once we go to city and Again, we get all the transactions through microflow, which is just by the association based on city. But when we, and <clears throat> so this is our basic layout. Now for the, for the sorting config to work, um, what we need to do is data grid two gives us a facility or a feature where you can save the sorting config in an attribute. So we are saving it in the data grid two helper attribute. That is the sort config. So this is the first uh, first attribute that is sort config and I've set it as unlimited. Now, once you have that, you also need to make sure that you have an on change activity to do something that you want, right? So in this case, if you want to un, uh, hide or unhide the, the columns, then we're going to call a microflow or a nanoflow. I chose microflow in this case. So once you hit show, what happens is anytime a user clicks on the sorting, uh, microflow will be called. <clears throat> and this is a simple microflow. So the sort config is always stored in a JSON format. Uh, by, so this is how it looks. So in this case, we have four different columns, but you might have two, three, five, ten columns, right? So um, the objects would, the number of objects would be more for you. So in this case, just an example for the date column. We have the date column and the sorting can be true or false, which means that the table is sorted by this particular column or not. And the sort method shows if what the sort method is. So it could be ascending, descending, right? And um, if the column is hidden or not, and what is the order? So date is the first one, so we have zero. And description is second, so it is one, and subsequently two and three for the third and fourth columns. Now, uh, as any time the change, um, the on change activity is called for the sorting config, what we do is I um, have a sort config stored in a string variable and then pass it to an import helper. <clears throat> the reason I pass it to an import helper because I don't want to be managing so many string manipulations in this case, right? So it's easier if I ship them into four different objects or five different objects, or any number of objects, but it's easier for me to um, to manage everything. So I have an import map that takes in the, the string and returns a root variable. And then 
also the four columns will be now four different sort config import export helper objects and as we go ahead from the root we just retrieve the list of the sort configs by association and we find a column that is sorted so sort true right so we find a column basically a column object um so this gives us an object which says oh we have sorted the data grid to by this column now in this case we have two different conditions one if the column is sorted by change or not if it's sorted by change and we don't want to hide anything right we want to unhide everything so we want to show all the four columns and also the same if the table is sorted or the data grid two is sorted by the date in a descending order right and also if there's no sorting order or the table is sorted by nothing which means the sort is empty so once uh, we have that we go here and we run a loop on all the four or five or any number of um, helpers over here and once we have that we just do hidden as false for all the columns we have on the table once that is done um, we go ahead and do the rest but say if the table is sorted by something else say a description or dates in an ascending order or by the temperature then what we do is we get the column change right because we want to hide the change column we don't want to do anything to the sort order so we get the column from the list that is uh, we find it by expression and whose name is change and <clears throat> we've set that field as hidden now so hidden as true for this one and then what we do is we again export the config because we need to give it give the new config to the data grid again in the json format so to get that we use an export json and the same way we pass the how we pass a string before now we pass a root over here as a parameter and it will fetch all the four objects that were connected to it and or associated to it and <clears throat> we change where we change the uh, hidden value to be true or false right so that will come in and this export mapping will return a string variable over here so that string will be passed as a as a value to the uh, to data grid to helper and when this ends what happens is the city view data grid over here um, will display everything on the table as if it was um, as if it was done automatically by data grid too which means to hide not hide the column but actually we are handling all the logic so that's that's what is done by this particular microflow and again um i'll be giving you a link at the in the description so if you go fill out the form uh, give me your email address and i'll add you as a uh, as a member on this project so you should be able to access everything that i have done up until this point in this project so now let's go to the second trick um the second trick is to is to reset all the filters on the page now what happens is with the uh, three filters that we want on this page right we need to store their values somewhere so um, the config somewhere basically now the filters act a little bit different than the sort config because sort config needs to store everything about the whole table all the columns we have so we could have two columns 10 columns 20 columns so that's the reason it uses a JSON format, but here you just want to store a start date, end date. So these are two separate attributes in a in a table. Uh, same thing goes for the temperature, and the same goes for the description as well. So we are storing all of this again in the data grid to helper as start date, end date, description, and temperature. We have also said uh, we also created a new variable called is reset filters clicked so and the visibility of this particular data grid is based on this one so if the data grid 2 becomes unvisible right or unavailable when 
sorry, invisible when the reset filters is clicked. So is true, it, that's when it becomes invisible, but it becomes available again, or it becomes visible again when the value is set to false. And how do we do it is basically when someone clicks on the reset button, um, <clears throat> we have a nano flow that has two different microflows. So the first one, what it does is it sets the value to be true. So is reset filter click true? So which means the data grid two becomes invisible on the page and the sorting config is set to the default one where where the date is sorted by descending order which is what we want as default you could have something else but this is what i wanted as default but the description is false the temperature is false and change sort is false so these are this is the default config that i have set up on my end um once we have this what we do is we again um because this is a nano flow these are uh executed separately and they're also as soon as an activity is executed in a nano flow the change is visible on the page right so uh, this one hides the data grid and this one what it does is it reloads the data grid because the now the reset is set to false so which means the data grid should be visible at this point but because the data grid had to reload it had to re-execute this data source microflow and fetch everything by itself. So, um, so what essentially does happens over here is every time say you do this and hit reset or add something. Over here. So every time you hit reset button, the data grid goes uh, invisible on the page and again quickly becomes visible on the page by reloading all the new data. But it happens so fast that it is not it you, you do see a flicker but you do not see a whole loading screen or empty page for a few seconds on the on the in the ui so so that's one of the trick now just to prove how it or just to show how it happens is let's add a breakpoint here and say hit the hit the reset button so once you hit the reset button we are here and step over now the data grid 2 should be hidden because the is reset button is uh, click is set to true now so you see that it's hidden on the page but as soon as we go to the next one it which makes it visible again and the data grid 2 is back with everything um, freshly loaded and all filters being empty so let's continue so that's the second trick now um, these are two main tricks that are going to help you in in succeeding with the with the data grids and for um, future what I will be also doing is I'll be bringing a new step by step tutorial video on how to unleash the full potential of data grid too so it will not be a short video where I just show two tricks like this but I will be making a video where we go step by step by creating and app from scratch and then building all the widgets together so um yeah sign up for the uh for x for getting access to this app and then uh, i'll also send you a notification on that same email when you sign up or when the new video is released on the new data grid 2 tutorial right um yeah so that's it for today and thank you